We offer a proposal aimed at, at studying the model of the religious behavior and form of the religiosity related to the Iberian society, worship and rituality. We focus uh, our attention on the worship spaces in caves, important in the religiosity of these protohistoric <coughs> societies. They form an active part in the territory with an evident role in community identification. We look at diverse territories and contests between the province of Castellón and the Alto Guadalquivir, Guadalquivir which is our uh, special area of reference. Uh, our chronological framework is equally broad. However, we focus mainly on the 4th and 3rd centuries BC. We are faced with a diverse map of, uh, as a fundamental feature. In another vein, in a traditional way, the term cave sanctuary in Iberian societies has been used uh, globally. Uh, this has led to worship spaces in different territories and with different features. Uh, we aim to break with this idea. In this way, our approach uh, will be based on two variables. First, as cave spaces in the territory of collective participation, integration, and religious identifications as a multisensorial multi contest with a special, a special trait uh, that uh, facilitates the, the recreation of ritualities charged with symbolism. The in-depth study of ritual aspects linked to this type of space needs to contextualize the role of the landscape we have uh, talk uh, about this this morning in the religious structure in, of the Iberian societies. In, do, in those societies, the religious system were connected and tied to nature. The territories have a clear symbolic dimension that was projected through landmark, which were integrated into and even participated in the mythological narration and the construction of the worldviews. It's basic that we integrate the political territory into the study of these liminal spaces. In this way, we believe that ritual mobility is a fundamental variable, as it uh, can be incorporated as a social action important to make inference on self-definition, territorial definition, and of course, symbolic religious aspect. The pilgrimage was just another way of appropriating the sacred landscape as a space chart with traditional cultural meaning of the memory of the community. In the Iberian societies, that ritual mobility have included the movement of a large number of people and a large uh, scale of mobility. As such, it was necessary to involve the class of mobility in the, in the construction of the collective identity relations, in which a strong emotional component would have been involved. In the context, uh, we place the pilgrimage as an initial phase in the complex religious performance, and we analyze it uh, as another stage in the ritual process. Thus, uh, the pilgrimages to sacred spaces and the landscapes in suit communication with the divine and turn those places into territories of grace. To analyze the modes of religiosity, as we said, it's necessary to incorporate a study of the caves as multisensorial spaces. Spaces, spaces where the opposite to day-to-day -day life, they provoke intense emotional responses. Visiting these natural spaces cause expectation and fear. Sensory sensibility also helps uh, create a feeling of community. This exchange of experience, creativities, and feeling that reinforce the cohesion of the group. Thus, the worship community were emotional communities, and emotions motivated the ritual and helped to connect to the specific not supernatural powers. Interpretative tendencies such as archaeology of sensor, uh, senses provide us with a basic source of information. Following this tendency, we must, we must look at the sensorial and emotional experience in the ritual practices. 
if we analyze this type of, uh, of Iberian contest, uh, must, uh, we must evaluate first the symbolisms of their journey. Kinetic ritual that not only took place on way to the sacred uh, space, but also after the destination. Secondly, the multisensoriality that is observed in the restricted space of a cave, in which sensory impressions are expanded, permitting a connection with the hereafter. But there are no uni universal experiences in the same way as the sensation we experience when we enter a cave today, but depending the, the age or our age or, or life experience, it's no easy matter to understand how, how those people uh, in the fourth and third centuries must have, must have feel inside the caves. Therefore, we defend the need to contextualize those experience, experiences, as Hamilakis point out, both of the affective and sensorial and temporal components must be analyzed alongside the political and other elements in the archaeological region. <coughs> All this sensorial history can be read in the context and the, in, in the offering uh, and or ritual elements on the, of the archaeological record. Emo emotion and experience are also important to analyze the survival over the centuries, thus making them multi-temporal. As Van Dyke reminds us, experience is fundamental to memory, and it's the memory that legitimizes the continuity of the ritual practices. OK, so based on the heterogeneous map of the religious manifestation in caves, we wish to approach the models of religious behavior perceptible in these spaces. To our context, we apply recent proposals constructed from the social anthropology that focus on the identification of modes of religiosity. In particular, we base our analysis on one of the most far-reaching theories proposed by Harvey Whitehouse that focus on the differentiation of two models, doctrinal and imagistic, looking mainly at variables in form, participation, frequency, dissemination, and memory. These models are either contrasting or complementary as ways of measuring religious and ritual actions. The first model, doctrinal, alludes to those practices that correspond to reiterative patterns. And the second model, imagistic, is characterized by the intervention of an intense emotional charge, magnified in case <coughs> represented by a small, a small number of people. The heterogeneity of the Iberian religious uh, landscape allows us to apply identification and classification tests following this theoretical guidance. In this way, we analyze, analyze how they were incorporated into the cave religious space, whether they were exclusive models or, in contrast, they could be read as, a com as complementary. We began with the idea that the worship spaces in caves were largely governed by the matistic modes of religiosity. Here we will take a brief look, really brief, <laughs> at look at some examples, all of them on the limits of their territories and distance from the places of habitat. La Piedra del Águila, late 4th century BC, is an example of a ritual space that marks the territorial limits of Bucalame in the Sierra de Segura Mountains, Jaén. The worship in this cave was associated with agricultural propitiation rituals, where plant offerings, cereals and legumes were carbonized and deposited and deposit in pottery vessels and sparta receptacles. The repetition of the offerings reflect the eternal return to the rite and cyclical behavior linked to the agricultural calendar. However, the composition of the deposits, not two, are the same, tell us that, that the mechanisms were regulated but up to a certain point. The memory was built on the basis of multiple voices and it is not possible to define social hierarchy through the rite. Contests such as these reveal strong social cohesion processes on a local scale based on an animatistic model. La Cueva del Sapo and La Cueva Merine, frequented between the 5th and the 3rd century BC, are ritual spaces in caves located on the southwestern border of the Opidum of Edeta, Valencia. The worship of Cueva del Sapo was organized around a hunting ritual and an offering of deer and obicaprics. The hunt and the subsequent offering of animals which shared the space and time with an atypical inhumation symbolized a key initiation ritual for the Iberian aristocratic societies, which is materialized in the pottery image of various territories that we have in the image. 
The ritual practice carried out in Merinel revolved around the repeated offering of animals, cranial parts of young pigs and ovicaprids, most of which were deposited in pottery vessels and on plates. This practice may have been related to a wide diversity of rites of passage and protagonists. Also, the types of offerings show a certain degree of reiteration, characteristic from the doctrinal mode. The ritual density of the two spaces implies a limited frequency that provides unique experience for certain social groups, thus entering again into the matistic model. Finally, La Coba dels Pilars is a ritual cave located in Serra del Mariola Mountains, Alicante, in one of the main communication corridors of the central area of Contestania, which marked the, board, marked the border between the territories of La Cobalta and El Cabezo de Mariola. This cave, frequented between the 5th and the 4th century BC, contained a deposit with a variety of pottery. It stands out a large red figure where amphora with a sense of juvenile initiation and the assemblage of around a hundred cooking pots, linked to commensality practices or the offering of cultivated products. Also interesting is the small collection of brown rings and hoops, hoops possibly related to the transformation of the body image, when elements of childhood such as braids were abandoned. The repetition and standardization of the offerings is a good example, again, of the doctrinal model. However, other elements are more related to the imatistic mode, thanks to the sensorial experience produced in, the ex in some um, exceptional areas of the cave. Other examples open up diverse possibilities in which properties of both modes of religiosity may have been combined, and the doctrinal mode prevail over the imatistic mode. This is not a contradiction, since they are not two forms of religiosity, but ways of organizing the religious experience and its actions. One example of this combination will be the vast territory of Castulo and its sanctuaries that were worshipped <coughs> at after a pilgrimage of several days, Collado de los Jardines and La Cua de la Lovera, and contributed to organizing a very large religious community. Different practices with huge importance to the society were held, held in them, rites of passage, passage nuncial rites, aggregation rites, couple and fertility rites, there are variables that define this context from the doctrinal model, but uh, but nothing, sorry, <laughs> from the doctrinal model. So we have the scale of participation and frequentation with this very large community making several thousand offerings. For example, uh, only as voters, we have like uh, 7,000, for example. The repeated types of behavior expressed through the bronze iconography and a clear class distinction. However, from our point of view, these features do not invalidate intense emotional experiences in which diverse mechanisms were also involved. One example is the present in this context documented in Castellar of visual phenomena, such as hierophanies, as Cesar Esteban will show us later, <laughs> that will have magnified the intense sensorial experience. So the, re the re regardings we can make based on the application of these theories on modes of religiosity and read the analytical perspective, at least we think. This reaffirms the need to overcome the passive concept of the materiality and to study in depth aspects to go beyond mere visual representations, investigating the channels of sensorial and emotive empathy. This task, uh, involves approaching the cognitive geographies that are fruitful source of analysis in the religious space. The heterogeneity of the Iberian ritual landscape allow us to appreciate, to appreciate how both forms of organizing the religious experience were manifested in contemporary context. In the case, therefore, it is necessary to apply an analysis to different scales that explain their functionality in the territorial context, at the same time as their role in identity building on social level. This is um, a line of study that we have very outlined here. We are working, Carmela, uh, Carmen Rueda and me, Nasi Grau and Ivana Morris, you can say hi. <laughs> but we think that we possess a huge potential in the Iberian religious space, which is starting right now. So thank you. Thank you.